Counterfeit artist Lee Mann is taking time out of his jail sentence to paint. After a while, he lifts up the masterpiece to reveal a well-forged stamp which he attaches to a letter. With the help of an inmate, a distraction is created when the mailman comes to deliver letters to the inmates. During the commotion, Lee sneakily slips his letter into the mailbag. A few days later, Lee is handed over to the jurisdiction in Hong Kong from Thailand. In Hong Kong, he's taken to a place where the Hong Kong police force, led by Inspector Ho, is trying to investigate a series of murders and robberies tied to counterfeit notes, which they managed to trace to Lee under the mastermind of an unknown boss called Painter. On the first interrogation, Lee only ends up throwing a tantrum about how the painter was going to take them all down. Inspector Ho then asks for him to be taken away. The next day, they begin their second interrogation. Having barely started the process, they're interrupted by a famous artist, Yuen Man, who recognizes Lee's talents and intends to bail him out. The police force doesn't agree to it because Lee is their only hope of catching Painter. But then, both Yuen and Ho finally reach a decision. Lee will be bailed out, but on one condition. And that condition is that Lee will be placed under witness protection for revealing Painter's true identity and criminal history. Lee meets Yuen Man and tries to warn her that they're both in danger. If he says anything about Painter, Yuen Man then informs him that she lost her fiance because of Painter and has every right to get any information she needs about him. With that, Lee is taken for interrogation, where he starts to recollect his memories from 1985. He met a woman in Vancouver named Yuen Man, and they fell in love. Both happened to be painters, and their dreams were to find who would purchase their paintings at least. But 10 years went by, and they were still unable to sell anything. One evening, when Lee is returning from working outside, he overhears a manager praising Yuen's work and recognizing her talent. However, the man criticizes Lee's works for only imitating the styles of great artists. Yuen tells the man that if he's not going to represent both her and Lee, then she doesn't want him to be her manager, making Lee feel bad for her. Later, Lee lies to her that all his works were purchased by the gallery and that he has already been wired the deposits. But he had also reached an agreement with the man from before to make Yuen famous. Lee then automatically becomes a forger since his skills allow him to copy great art. One day, Yuen catches him while he's working on another forging job with all his art lying around him. She has one of his paintings in her hand and with tears, she tells him that she thought he had forgotten one of his works. So she goes to the gallery only to realize that he lied about selling all his art. They eventually start an argument, but Lee is interrupted by Inspector Ho who tells him that she doesn't care to know his life story. She urges him to get to the part where Painter comes into the story and asks Yuen Man if she's willing to wait. But Yuen Man doesn't mind one bit. Lee then continues his story. Fast forward to a few months later, when Yuen now has her own gallery. But amongst all her works, she hangs up one of Lee's works that she loves. Lee comes to see her and they start talking again about their dreams, which attempts to turn into an argument. But Yuen tells Lee that they haven't seen each other in a long time and wouldn't wish that they would quarrel now. Just then, a man manages to gather a crowd around him as he begins to speak highly of Yuen's works. But when it comes to Lee's work, the criticism begins. Yuen gets fed up with his nonsense talk and pours him water before asking him to get out of her gallery. The guy then smiles and leaves, but Lee goes after him to apologize, and that's when he realizes that the man is Painter, and tells Lee that he wasn't there for Yuen, but for him. Painter then invites Lee to join his team. After reconsidering Painter's offer, Lee returns to the gallery and lights his work on fire, much to Yuen's dismay. After he leaves, her manager yells, saying, how can he represent someone who lights up his own paintings? The following day, Lee meets up with Painter and agrees to join his team. He then asks whose painting he'll be forging, and Painter holds up a $100 bill, making Lee have second thoughts about his decision. He steps out of the car and tells Painter that he can't do that. Painter then tells him that his name is Ng Fuxeng, 
from Hong Kong and his art happens to be making counterfeit money. But Lee doesn't agree to help such a business. However, he seems to have had a change of heart and decided to go to Canada with Painter, having it in mind that he will return to win Yuan's heart again. Painter introduces Lee to the rest of the team, and the process to start making the 1996 US $100 bill is soon put into action. Lee seems to be warming up to the process, especially gathering the material needed to overcome the security features of the $100 bill. He becomes close to one of the members called Uncle Yam. Yam puts him through the process and even becomes close enough to talk about his family with Lee. Lee's relationship with Painter is also taken to a whole new level, as Painter takes him along for all their errands explaining what to and what not to do. But Lee soon starts to have second thoughts when he realizes Painter's tendency for violence. To clarify his violent side, Painter forces him to join them in an armored car robbery for color shifting ink, the last resource for making the $100 bill. During the robbery, Painter goes into a fit of rage and takes all the guards down after being ambushed by one of the guards. He even goes as far as exploding what's left of the truck. Back to the present, the police have gathered information about Painter and his gang and their various ages. Inspector Ho then requests a background check on all of them and to find the ones they can find. And for all she knows, Painter could be using the fake name Ng Fuk Seng. Inspector Ho then slowly moves into a flashback where she first got the assignment to track down the counterfeit terrorist, Painter. A Canadian officer, Lee Wing Chit, who happens to be a counterfeit expert with the Canadian police, has to go undercover to catch Painter. He joins a yacht undercover of a man named Bishop Ma, who is looking to purchase counterfeit money. While on the ride, he notices Inspector Ho dressed as one of the service girls and waits until the coast is clear to confront her. She had clearly followed him and had no idea that Wing Chit planned to meet the almighty painter after putting his plan together for a year. They then resolve to assist each other. When one of the felons tries to make a move on Ho, Wing Chit steps in to help, pretending to claim rights on Ho. Later, another yacht arrives and tosses a phone in a plastic bag asking them to wait for the call. Ho then snaps back to reality with Lee sitting patiently and waiting for the next question. He turns to Yuan Man and asks if she's alright. Instead of answering, she reminds him that they're probably going to be doomed since Lee can never be free of Painter. Lee then promises that nothing will happen, but that only reminds Yuan Man of how irresponsible Lee was back then. She then urges the interrogation to continue. The flashback then advances to the conclusion of the making of the counterfeit notes, neatly and perfectly done after all the hard work. Lee then walks in and confronts Painter. He asks if they would go on another killing spree once their ink finishes and refuses to be a part of it. This angers Painter and he sparks at Lee. With not much to say, he orders everyone to get back to work as they'll be delivering next week. The week soon runs out. And before you know it, they're distributing the packages to their clients from Juarez, Havana, Bengaluru, Dublin, and finally, in Poxy, where Painter is introduced to their counterfeit expert, Ng Sao Ching, who admires his work. Painter then asks of a certain general, but he's told that the general is fine and would especially like to avoid the liquor tonight. While they have their discussion, Lee comes to present a replica of the ink shifting paint he had just finished making, but trips and accidentally spills it all over the window. For a brief moment, he exchanges looks with Su Ching, but Painter immediately ruins the moment by scolding Lee. He sees his guests off and goes back to continue yelling at Lee. However, his temper is calmed when he realizes that Lee has successfully made the color shifting ink they initially had to obtain in all sorts of wrong ways. The following day, Painter travels to Thailand with Lee to renegotiate their contract with the warlord known as the General, the one Painter had asked of last night. On their way to the base, Lee tells Painter how he figured out the make of the ink shifting paint and promises to adjust the color to match that of the dollar note when they return to Hong Kong. He also assures Painter that he won't have to steal again. Painter then surprises Lee by informing him that he has bought a resort under Lee's name and promises to settle him handsomely after their deal so he can get back together with Yuan Man again. 
Finally, they arrive at the general's base. Before meeting with the general, Painter hands Lee a detonator and asks him not to let go until he says so. While they're negotiating with the general, Painter reveals that he is actually there for revenge. Having figured out that the general was responsible for his father's death, he then asks Lee to let go of the detonator. But Lee, being his usual wimpy self, hesitates. Seeing that they're both in danger, he lets go of the detonator, <laughs> causing a huge explosion from behind. From that, an attack is immediately issued. <laughs> and the general gets shot in the legs while trying to escape. The whole base gets destroyed, and the general is taken down in the process. Lee, who's trying so hard not to die, finds Su Ching, the counterfeit expert from last night, in the rubbles crying. He rushes towards her and manages to rescue her. Painter, along with his team, also suffers from the attack, causing a halt in their work for a whole year. According to Lee, the team takes cover at the Golden Triangle. During their one-year break, Cao Ching takes time to heal from her wounds. Afterward, she joins Painter's team, and Painter gives her a fake passport with the name Yuan Man. During that time, Lee also finds out that Yuan Man has become a famous and successful artist. Painter gets overly excited and purchases all of her works under Lee's name, only to find out that Yuan Man is engaged to her agent, and a wedding date will be set soon. Lee and Painter get into an argument about the whole thing, and Painter tells him to get out the moment he's done with the color shifting ink. After that argument, Painter looks out the window of his yacht to see the one with Wing Chit, who's disguised as Bishop Ma. One of Painter's members tosses the phone in a plastic bag and asks them to wait for the call. Now, everything is adding up smoothly. Painter, however, is in doubt about the so-called Bishop Ma. He questions his team and finds out that Bishop Ma has placed an irresistible offer and that no one has seen his real face during deals. Painter then recalls Uncle Ma's antique shop, where he spotted the Canadian officer and realizes that Yam has put them in a lot of trouble by breaking their number one rule of not spending the counterfeits they make and the consequences of having his hands chopped off. Lee tries to warn Uncle Yam, but it's already too late. Painter has already arrived, and it turns out that the rules aren't to have their hands chopped off, but to have the offender's family eliminated. Lee calls the rules absurd, and Yam starts banging his head on the ground, pleading for his family to be spared. Painter, however, seems to have tossed whatever conscience he has left in the garbage and finishes off Yam and having discovered that Bishop Ma is an undercover agent, he plots to put an end to Wing Chit without Lee's knowledge. On the day of exchange, Lee is asked to take out the briefcase, only to find out that its content is a gun. Obviously, Painter is giving Lee the opportunity to do away with the agent, but we all know Lee. He hesitates and hints to Wang Chi about what's going on. Wing Chit then attacks Lee, and during the struggle, Painter shoots him by himself. Fed up with Lee's foolishness and cowardice, Painter gets him a last chance and reveals his captives, Yuan Man and her fiancé, both blindfolded in the next room. Painter tells him that if he wants the girl back in his life, then eliminating her fiancé shouldn't be an issue. However, Lee keeps trembling, so Painter offers to help him. Lee then grabs the gun and points it at Painter. Seeing as Lee isn't ready to take his side, Painter ends you and Man's fiance, <laughs> causing Lee to turn against him. Painter also tries to shoot both Lee and you and Man, but Lee quickly dives in and saves her as a shootout begins with Cao Ching and Lee against Painter and his men. During the commotion, Lee manages to take Painter down, and afterward, he tries to comfort Yuan Man, but she rejects him. Cao Ching then rushes to Lee and tells him they have to leave. The two escape to Thailand and use the resort Painter had bought for Lee as their hideout. Following this event, Lee realizes that Painter is still alive. After finding out that Yam's family passed away, he knows that Painter will definitely come back for revenge and is soon to find them. He also figures out that Cao Ching has been hiding the newspapers about Painter and breaks it to her that he can no longer stay at the resort. Apparently, a memorial will be held the following week by Yuan Man, and he knows that Painter will try to get her there. Cao Ching tries to convince him to stay, but his mind is made up. Not long after he arrives at the station, he's confronted by the Thai police about a counterfeit note. He tries to escape, but he is unsuccessful and eventually arrested for counterfeiting. While he's being taken away, he notices Painter in the crowd, 
and realizes he's been set up. In the present day, Lee gives the police a drawn description of what Painter looks like. Afterward, he signs some papers and is finally granted bail, but he's to be under surveillance every 24 hours. Lee and Yuan are then escorted to a hotel where Lee apologizes for all the wrong he has done. Yuan is reluctant at first, but gives in and reconciles with him. A few days later, Inspector Ho notices a policeman who looks exactly like Lee's drawn description of Painter. She immediately chases after him, but is unable to meet up with him in the elevator, so she hurries to the security room to announce that she has found the criminal. She sends some police after him and eventually, he's apprehended in the briefing room. He is immediately interrogated, but the confused cop claims that he's not the man they're looking for and is a legitimate officer who even drove Lee to the police headquarters. And that's when it all occurs to Inspector Ho that they've been played by Lee the whole time and that he's actually Painter. And the whole story was made up. And this is the end. This was a recap of the 2018 movie Project Gutenberg by Felix Chong, starring Chow Yun Fat and Aaron Kwok. So what do you think about such a twisted end? How many of us believed Lee's story from the beginning? Let us know in the comments section with hashtag cinema recap. Until next time.